Greetings! First, I hope all of you are well and safe. My name is Gami Shrestha. I'm the director of the U.S. Carbon Cycle Science Program Office at the USCCRP. And I'm also here representing the Carbon Cycle Interagency Working Group, which leads the U.S. Carbon Cycle Science Program Office. This presentation will cover some opportunities that are converging across multidisciplinary platforms to seek and promote innovative solutions for climate change mitigation by reducing carbon emissions and enhancing carbon dioxide removal strategies for negative emissions. Since the publication of the U.S. National Academies of Sciences uh, Negative Emissions Research Agenda in 2019, which contains specific recommendations for further research um, actions, um, subsequent initiatives by the public and pub private sectors have leveraged this renewed attention toward promising, promising negative emissions research and implementation strategies by encompassing scientific and technological breakthroughs in carbon cycle observations, monitoring and predictions, and by incorporating consider considerations of human interactions in multidimensional systems. The IBCC reports and a number of global, global experts and organizations have presented a number of solutions. In my talk, I discuss some of these solutions, focusing mainly on some messages um, from the latest sustained climate assessment report of the UHCRP, which we call the second state of the carbon cycle report, or SOCO2, and then some related interagency activities. Authored by more than 200 scientists from the US, Canada and Mexico, the second state of the carbon cycle report provides the latest assessment of scientific knowledge of the North American carbon cycle. The report presents key findings and actionable information on the observed status and trends um, of carbon cycle within the North American carbon cycle as influenced by natural and human induced factors. These findings are based on definitive multidisciplinary and experimental observational and, mod and modeling studies from the last decade. Across almost 900 pages, we assessed and discussed the last decade's scientific evidence, observation cap capabilities, eco ecosystem projections, and societal perspectives that inform many of today's carbon management mitigation actions and carbon dioxide removal strategies across land, ocean, atmospheric, and societal systems. For instance, the assessment of carbon cycle in the North American energy sector found that although actions in North America cannot alone reduce emissions uh, enough to limit global temperature rise to 2 degrees Celsius, the estimated cumulative cost from 2015 to 2050 for the US to reduce emissions by 80% relative to 2005 levels by using a variety of carbon dioxide reduction and removal options is in the range of 1 trillion to 4 trillion US dollars. Compare that to the total annual cost in 2050 for climate change damages across health, infrastructure, electricity, water resources, agriculture, and ecosystems in the US, amounting to about $170 billion to $206 billion, and that's a conservative estimate. Multiple lines of evidence assessed in the second state of the carbon cycle report demonstrated that Changes in climate, human activities, and ecosystem responses will alter the carbon cycle and future long-term removals of carbon by current land and ocean system 6. And understanding the mechanisms and consequences of such carbon cycle effects provide opportunities to make informed and innovative carbon management and policy, policy decisions. Multiple options for informed carbon-focused climate interventions across land, air, ocean, Human settlements, as well as technological and governance realms, were also evaluated in this decadal assessment. All those options are based on current estimates of carbon stocks and fluxes, particularly the capacity of Earth systems to absorb, bury, and store carbon. We can say we are going to remove carbon, but let's for a second think about how much has already been removed in the last decade and how much more could be removed. For instance, Evidence suggests that North American lands have persisted as a net carbon sink over the last decade, 
taking up about 600 to 700 teragrams of carbon per year, which is 11 to 13 percent of global carbon removal by, by terrestrial ecosystems. Previously, conflicting atmospheric measurements and land inventories now converge on this range, although uncertainties remain in estimates derived from both approaches. The weight of the evidence leaves little doubt about the direction and overall magnitude of the land sink. Future impacts from climate change, land use change, and disturbances may diminish the sink. Inland waters, on the other hand, emit about 247 teragram carbon per year to the atmosphere, but also bury about 155 teragram carbon per year in sediments. Tidal wetlands and estuaries represent a combined net sink of 17 teragram carbon per year from the atmosphere, and 14 teragram per year are buried in sediments. The coastal ocean directly absorbs about 160 teragram carbon per year from the atmosphere and buries about 65 teragram per year in sediments. This details findings and their understandings from the second state of the carbon cycle report represent marked improvements in the understanding of carbon cycle in North America's aqueous environments and highlight the size of carbon transfers in water and across land water interfaces. However, uncertainties for many of these fluxes remain large and need to be investigated. So how do we start to converge diverse carbon cycle disciplines and sectoral sciences for climate interventions? The schematic illustrates examples of components needed to represent carbon stock changes prior to addressing these questions and related policy drivers. Carbon and carbon dioxide estimates can be generated using observations, models of different complexity, or both. To understand and estimate future carbon stocks and emissions, drivers of carbon stock changes and carbon emissions must be considered and represented. So what are we doing or planning as an interagency body? What do we need and why? So we, we are reviewing, we have reviewed um, some reports, including the National Academy of Sciences, um, negative emissions um, study. Um, we've identified some omissions of some key federal and interagency um, activities and programs, and we'd very much like to be included in, in future um, or ongoing conversations and planning related to interagency or multi-agency carbon dioxide removal um, activities. So please come talk to us. As an interagency program, we, we're asking ourselves where would we want to be in 10 years with respect to um, the science of carbon dioxide removal and informing uh, carbon dioxide removal strategies. What are or will be the key science and implementation gaps? What do we need to know? What do we need to know um, in terms of what different agencies are doing or not doing in carbon dioxide removal? What are the different um, options and instruments for, for potential future applications? We recently launched the 2020 Federal Carbon Dioxide Removal Research Survey um, to, um, to, to um, seek information on different ocean, land, atmospheric, society, and ecosystem interfaces-based uh, carbon dioxide removal uh, research um, uh, activities. We're exploring uh, the possibility of organizing multi-agency carbon dioxide removal workshops and also exploring different partnerships. And we're pretty op open to, to talking, so uh, please come and talk to us uh, if you'd like. Finally, um, I'd like to remind you of our program's mission. So the US Carbon Cycle Science Program's mission is to uh, coordinate and, fed and facilitate federally funded carbon cycle research and provide leadership to the US Global Chain Research Program on carbon cycle science priorities. In addition to following the mandates of the Global Chain Research Act of 1990, the UHCRP strategic plan goals and carbon cycle interagency working group member agencies' individual priorities, our interagency work is primarily informed by input from a very diverse interdisciplinary science community and stakeholder base. As we plan our next multi-agency research coordination and, and facilitation activities, we will continue to rely on the input and feedback we receive from this community. Thank you.